Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'm the Technical Director at Pure Storage for VMware Solutions. What we're going to be talking about today is virtual volumes. Why they exist, what they are, and some of the benefits around using them with, of course, the Pure Storage Flash Array. So let's get into it. So first off, the reason VVols exist is to solve a core issue with traditional VMware storage, often concerned around VMFS. So today, you have some VMs. And these VMs all have virtual disks. And these are files on a file system. Right? And this works pretty well. Right? Hey, if I need to move a VM somewhere else, if I need to use VMware storage features around QoS or whatnot, it works pretty well, right? Because the underlying physical layer of storage has been completely abstracted. Right? And so this whole concept of VM decays has allowed a, a lot of flexibility in the VMware environment. But it also introduces a problem. This file system is generally also one volume on an array. So if I want to use a feature like replication, if I want to change how it's protected, how it's, how it's configured, a performance, QoS, whatever, it's not easy to do. Right? Because if I need to protect this VM, let's say I want to replicate it every 30 seconds, I have to either change the replication of the volume that hosts this file system, which is of course is going to affect this VM, this VM, these VM decays, or I need to move it elsewhere, right? A different data store that has that protection. And furthermore, how do I know that this volume is replicated every 30 seconds? I don't, right? So I need to use a plugin or I need to correlate it and go to my array and figure out what's going on. Um, and that still doesn't necessarily guarantee it. And furthermore, even if it does, how do I know it's replicated every 30 seconds tomorrow, next month, next year? How do I ensure compliance with the SLA I need for this virtual machine? And so the issue around granularity and, of course, policy compliance, SLA compliance, is really the crux of the issue that virtual volume solves. So let's talk about how it solves it. So how do virtual volumes solve for these two problems, granularity and compliancy? Well, a couple ways. First off, Every virtual disk you now add to a virtual machine, if it's VVOL based, is actually a physical volume on the array. All right, so if I have a VM and I create a new virtual disk, what actually happens is a volume is created on the array. If this is 10 gigs, 10 gigs. Right? So every virtual disk is actually an object on the array. So what this allows you to do is configure replication snapshots, QoS, whatever the array allows you to do to a volume, to this volume, which is a virtual disk, right? So this not only gives you VM granularity, it gives you virtual disk granularity, right? If you have two virtual disks, you have two volumes, right? And so you can independently configure them or configure them the same way, right? Whatever you're trying to do. So furthermore, <clears throat> there's the policy side of this, right? Okay, now I have the granularity, that's, that's all wonderful, but what about, what about compliancy, making sure that policy is right. Well, first off, because the communication layer between VMware and the array, VMware knows what the array is capable of. Hey, this array can replicate, it can snapshot, it can do whatever. And so inside of VMware, you can set up a policy. All right, I want to replicate every 10 minutes, and I want a snapshot once an hour. All right, so you create a policy based on that. And then when you go to provision this virtual machine, you choose this policy. And then VMware will look at your available storage and say, hey, this VVOL provider, this array here can do that, right? It can replicate every 10 minutes. It can snapshot once an hour. And so when you go to create that VM on that compliant storage, it will not only create the individual volumes that you need, but it also makes sure that, hey, this is you know 10 minutes and this is one hour. Right? It'll make sure these volumes are configured to that policy. And if someone goes and changes this from 10 minutes to 20 on the array somehow manually, VMware knows about it and marks this as non-compliant, right? Someone screwed with the configuration. You need to either go back to the array and fix it, or you can rerun this VM through the provisioning wizard inside of VMware. Say, all right, now that this has changed, here are your options to make sure that this SLA is satisfied. So what VVOLS offers at a high level is the granularity that you need to report 
on your virtual machines and their virtual disks to control them, to configure them, and also configure them properly when they're created and make sure they stay that way for the lifetime of your virtual machine. You don't want to find out in six months when you actually need to execute your DR plan that it's not being replicated at the SLA that you wanted or not being replicated at all, right? At a high level, these two problems are what virtual volume solves, but it's a whole lot more. So that's the high level concept of virtual volumes, the problem it solves and the value it brings. If you want to learn more about the architecture and how it's actually implemented, stay tuned and watch part two of this video series on the architecture of eVols on the Flash Array.